due to past trauma. Day, a high school student, has given up on the idea of seriously loving anyone. He meets Jack, a man his age, on his first day of living in Enoshima, and Jack happens to be Day's type of boy, and that's why he enjoys hanging out with him as a piece. Yet what was thought to be a one-sided and easy emotion begins to take an unexpected turn afterward. Let's enjoy the play together. Day is about to move to leave with her grandmother who lives on Enoshima Island, so he said goodbye to his uncle, who was always fooling around, refusing when the other man laughed that he could start over with a serious relationship when he got to a new place. He also said that he doesn't believe in love at all anymore. On his first day on the island, Day is attacked on the road by a fat chrysanthemum cat, rice bucket helper, and runs out of lunch to eat. A man chasing a cat came running on the occasion of jerking off the cat. The other person introduces himself as Jack Yamasuga, who owns a restaurant on the island. To make up for the feral cats, he often feeds causing the other to go without food. As Anna amends Jack, then invites Day to visit him at his home. After a grueling journey up the ladder, Day finally arrived at Jack's house. But such hard work was not in vain, because Jack's restaurant looks out over Inoshima's boundless ocean view. It took Day's mind off the exertion of the journey he had just made. Day couldn't help but look over at Jack, who was working diligently as he went into the kitchen to prepare his meal. Full of lustful thoughts, she fantasized that it would be nice to develop a relationship with Jack. It's just a shame that the other guy has a hetero look on his face. I guess there's no drama. Soon Jack brought out the hot meal. Day was amazed at the first bite and gave it rave reviews, also encouraged by chicken soup after hearing Jack talk about being the one to take over the family business. The off-handed bluntness with which the words were uttered also warmed Jack directly. After dinner, it was getting late for Day. So they said goodbye to Jack and got ready to go home. I almost ended up falling down the stairs because I wasn't paying attention. Luckily, Jack was quick to pull him back before Day fell and had an accident. After returning to Grandma's house, they couldn't help but recall the touch and body heat of being bailed out by Jack while soaking in the bathroom at night. He couldn't help but fantasize in his springtime if only he could do it with him. Fate is just so marvelous that Day transferred to the classroom. I had no idea that the person sitting next to the seat I was assigned to was none other than Jack Yamasuga, and that's why Day, a first-timer, made friends with Jack right away. They happily Saturday on the sidelines during afternoon gym class, admiring the pheromone swilling men on the field. A ball flew by and almost hit him while he was scoring and appreciating. The next second Jack was running through his sweat-soaked hair to wallop him. Day playfully reaches out and touches Jack's hair. As soon as he saw him turn his head a little awkwardly, Day then called out to Jack. Then he went up and invited the two of them to go on a date after school. Jack Dean turned down Day's invitation and accompanied Day after class. When Day walks by the ice cream store, debating which flavor to choose, Jack then dominates and just buys both flavors for Day to eat and make his choice. Day is also smart enough to just hand out the match of flavor for Jack to try first, then leave the ice cream Jack has eaten and bring Jack his favorite flavor. On the way, Day quickly confesses his sexuality to Jack. Jack originally thought Day was just kidding. Day's posturing as if it were nothing is a fact. But he didn't realize that the flicker of emotion under his eyes was caught in Jack's eyes, leaving Jack a little miffed at Day's jokey tone. It's a good thing Jack accepted Day's sexuality. He then borrows Day's cell phone in order to put a smile back on Day's face, adjusted the angle to help him take pictures of him eating suns and ice cream. The move also managed to get a smile from Day in the end. Grandma called and told Day to come home and check the water heater. So Day took Jack home and asked him to help look at it. This inspection by Jack means that it is estimated to be repaired by a professional. It made Day, who was told there was no hot water tonight, just break down and yell that he didn't want to take a cold shower. Seeing Day's sad face, Jack asks Day if she wants to go to the bathhouse tonight. The two soak together in the bathhouse. Jack asks Day why he's always half-joking in telling things about himself. Day has to confess to him that she once wanted to commit her heart to her favorite person when she was in middle school. But because of the fear that the relationship will be destroyed to the point that one other person thinks he's joking, he then retreated and echoed the other so timidly that he laughed in that attitude thereafter. In order not to make the other person feel, the burden of injury outside of their own can also have a step down. However, Jack was very unimpressed with him doing so. He thinks that Day will be the one who ends up getting hurt this way, so he hopes that Day won't do it again in the future. He also said he could be trusted and act as a listener for Day. Jack's tenderness just eats away at Day's insides a little bit. Day has been having sleepless nights about it since he returned home. He also began a conflicted interrogation in his mind as he cared more and more for Jack. Every other day Day goes to school, Day plays a quick question and answer session with Jack in a test-like manner. This was a relief after seeing that Jack was indeed able to interact with him normally. His eyes were on Jack from time to time during the class after that, and so he also gets to know Jack again from the sidelines. 
and it is clear from his interactions with students and faculty that Jack is simply one of the rare good men in the universe. An afternoon thunderstorm fell at the end of the school day. Seeing that Jack had forgotten his umbrella, they invited him to share it and go home with him. On the way, they just enjoyed walking with Jack in the drizzling rain with one small umbrella. It's just a shame that happy hour always goes by so fast the rain stops halfway through. They can't help but look at day and feel a little melancholy. Every other day they got sick with a cold and fever from getting caught in the rain. He got up to walk out of his room to get some water, only to run into Jack, who had come to his house to return his umbrella. He himself also fell to the ground with his body tilted backwards due to lack of stamina, and was assisted into the room by Jack who saw him coming out, eyes on Jack getting ready to leave. They fought her way up and took Jack's hand and begged him to stay with her until he fell asleep. So the gentle Jack nodded his head in agreement and sat her day down next to him. They and Jack talked for a while before taking their meds and going to bed. Jack recounts what he once did for his sister when she was sick. They, on the other hand, said that he had survived every illness all by himself and alone. This was heard from the side of Jack who couldn't help but feel a little heartbroken for Day. So he reached out and took Day's small hand in his, allowing Day to feel warm and then drift off to sleep. By the end of the night, Day was feeling much better. Seeing that the room was no longer occupied by Jack, he assumed that he was going home. He got up and went to the living room to say goodbye to his grandmother, not expecting to see Jack actually still a guest in the house. Seeing that Day was halfway to being well, Jack was relieved to say that it was time for him to go home. With that, he got up and prepared to leave. Before Jack leaves, Day calls out to him and asks why he's staying at his house. Unexpectedly, Jack replies that it's because he wants to look at his face all the time as he often douses off in class. Jack, who is on the verge of his sectional exams, finally realizes that something is wrong. It made him ask for Day's help in order not to take summer remedial classes. Originally, Day was self-conscious that he might not be able to help and wanted to bring in the class bully for help. However, it was rejected by the other party on the grounds that they did not want to increase their competitors. At Jack's sincere request, they agreed to start a short training program for Jack. The two began remedial training at Jack's home. Day's heart races at the proximity of Jack's touch during the tutoring session. Afterwards, he excused himself by saying he had to go to the restroom to calm down. Inadvertently, he bumps into Jack's father's tablet. Jack then voiced out behind him to introduce Day and went up to his father to twirl incense and say a few words. After hearing Jack say that his father didn't forget to work at the store even before he passed away, Day then came forward to pay her respects to Jack's father and thanked Jack's father saying he was glad the first person he recognized was Jack. He also made a wish to work with Jack in the future to guard the cafeteria so that his spirit would not have to worry. It is natural to make a great wish and try to fulfill it. Jack was also very serious about preparing for the various exams over the next few days. Even when I worked in the cafeteria, I took a single word card and memorized it. They also prepare key notes for Jack during the period and the two fight together until the day of the sectional exam comes. With Day's assistance coupled with Jack's earnest efforts, Jack finally reached a pass in all subjects, not having to take the summer program. For this, he bought Day vending machine drinks as a thank you. In the evening, Day was invited to his home to taste the store's upcoming cold noodles. In addition to being treated to a full meal, the family was also rendered happy by the calcy atmosphere of Jack's family dinner. He felt a happy warmth and joy from the bottom of his heart that he hadn't felt in a long time. After dinner, Jack followed to send Day out for a walk to cool off. He also thanked Day in a genuine way during the small talk. He told him that Day's words at his father's plaque touched him. So he is grateful and thankful that Day came to him, who knew Day's heart was racing again because of Jack's confession. After, he couldn't suppress his fluttering feelings any longer. They mustered up the courage to go forward and hug Jack. They and Straight bought confessing about Jack and how he likes him in this mood. But they didn't give Jack any time to react when he said it. He said to himself that he was just trying to get the point across to Jack. He then ran off at a fast pace without looking back. Jack can't concentrate at work after the confession, himself even more, so because his head was full of thoughts about what Day actually meant by what he said, the situation remained in the back of my mind even when Day, the closing Day, arrived. In contrast to Jack's full of questions, Day here is a superficial, as if nothing has happened attitude. It made Jack feel a little irritated inside, so much so that he dragged Day along with him and skipped class, deciding to take advantage of the solo conversation to get this off his chest. Jack wanted to hear Day's true feelings and thoughts before responding. They also confessed under Jack's questioning that she wanted to have sex with Jack the first time she saw him, but it grew to like him as he got along. Yesterday's confession was purely the result of a momentary lapse of emotion on his part, but it still holds out hope that a relationship with Jack might develop. After hearing Day's answer, Jack then replied that he had never really wanted to be in a relationship, but for Day's thoughts he wanted to value them as well. So I hope Day continues to like himself and give him some time. 
ちゃんと好きだってことを知っておくから。The two returned to school together afterward and were unsurprisingly called to the office by their tutor to be scolded. Yet instead of losing, it was a great day of gain for Day because not only did he not lose Jack, the one person who mattered, after his confession, Jack also invited him to go to the fireworks with him at the summer flower and garden festival. The invitation goes straight to Day to indulge in the sweetness of love. When I got home, I counted the days until the Hanabi festival and looked forward to that day as soon as possible. It's just a shame that Jack had less contact with Day going into the summer. Lonely Day on a karaoke date out with his class, just because Jack wasn't able to attend was a bit emotional. He was reassured by the school teacher that it was because Jack was too busy with the store's business to come. Although I haven't seen Jack for some time, there's also an ex shooter friend. Who wants to ask Day out for a bad fight while he's visiting in Oshima? But Day already has someone he wants to deliver his heart to, so he just rebuffed the other guy, stating that he had gone ashore from this kind of thing with his golden handshake. Day one day, just because she couldn't help thinking about Jack, he then takes it upon himself to go forward to Jack's store to find a man. However, after he climbed a bunch of steps well to arrive, but when he saw Jack who was seriously busy, he chose to go home because he didn't want to disturb him. He was content just to see Jack's face from afar. Finally made it to the day of the event arrived. They happily woke up early in the morning to freshen up and look at the clock in an anxious and nervous mood. He left the house early more than an hour before the appointed time. Along the way, he went to spin the twister first. He then gets the charm that looks like Jack's feral cat, Iete Tsuka, which he feeds to his family. Then he went to the entrance of the event and waited. He also managed to wait until Jet, who had arrived from work in time for his appointment, arrived. They was overflowing with joy at Jack's arrival. The two also quickly embarked on a date formation for the flower and fire festival. The two feasted together, and the process outside of the vendor snacks at the festival. They also accidentally discovers that Jack enjoys this hilarious activity. Just as the two were brushing up on their solo date, students from the class, who also came to the event, saw the duo and came up to talk to them. They're pulling two people into group activities with them at the drop of a hat. A straight balls, politely, declined his classmates' invitations to travel with him, leaving Day surprised by this. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'm going to have a lot more light bulbs on my anticipated trip for two. Jack takes Day to the lesser known Best Beach for sparklers when the fireworks were in full bloom. He said he hoped to enjoy the fireworks with Day in the coming year. This comment made Day unconsciously ask if the relationship would have been different then. Just as Day finished his sentence, he tried to pass it off as if nothing had happened. Jack then called out to Day and said he had decided to give Day the answer he had said at that point after a summer of burying yourself in work for days on end. Jack is actually in the same mood as they thinking about each other all the time, yet for fear of making any invitation without giving the other person an answer. Concerned about Day's feelings, Jack didn't contact Day for the rest of the summer. This time he did it with all his courage, though he wished he could have the right to stay by Day's side in the future without having to have any reason to do so. That one line also brought Day's dream come true of running in both directions to get together with Jack successfully. The two also sealed their love after a second kiss at the Flower and Fire Festival. After the fireworks event, the young couple strolled down the street holding hands, not wanting to go home. The two of them proposed to continue their walk and chat. This chat also from the night to chat until the rising sun, which is reluctant to say goodbye to the lovers to return home. 